Hey YouTubers, uh, making a video today uh, just because of some of my frustration I've had uh, just trying to find some ideas and pictures of uh, somebody installing a 350 or an LT1 or LS motor type into a, a, an older Cadillac like a 55 or 56. Um, you see people talk about it with you know 55, 56, 57 Chevys all day long but uh, never anything about the old Cadillacs. I uh, couldn't find a single picture anywhere. I've, I've, I've seen pictures of it already installed and uh, you know you can't really tell what the engine mount looks like and how they did it and everything like that so kind of frustrating. My car has been sitting in the garage for about a year now uh, with the transmission uh, disassembled uh, waiting for a, a new engine and transmission to go in. Finally came across a 96 LT1 motor. I got a 92 700R4 transmission that I painted up gold and silver. So let's take a look at that and I'm going to show the motor mount so kind of get an idea of what it looks like in case uh, somebody else is coming across this same issue where they're trying to put uh, this type of motor or 350 or something like that into a Cadillac. Like I said, this won't work for an LS motor because different motor mounts, but um, that was an option I was thinking about going with at one point in time, but cost of an LS motor is just uh, a little bit, a little bit too much for me. So um, I was able to pick this up pretty sweet deal. So running motor running transmission so that's the car it's going to go in so i've got a lot of work to do to remove the engine and whatnot out of there take the hood off take the bumper off uh, uh radiator supports and stuff you can see the radiator support and all that stuff from my parts car sitting down there on the, on the floor but um so i ordered a engine bracket um uh, engine mount bracket from uh ebay or something anyway i got tired of waiting on it so I was off yesterday, I was off today, and lo and behold, it shows up today. Yay, look at there. But, uh, you know, a little bit too long <laughs> long for me. I ended up <laughs> going buying some raw steel and making my own. So um, I'll show you the ones that I made. And uh, got a parts car over here. We'll go over there and take a look at it. And uh, this will just give you some ideas and some options in case you're wanting to do something like this. So. All right, sit down on my toolbox here. All right, so same motor. It's LT1. This one's a, a 95, but uh, it's got a 700R4 um, shell strapped to the back of it just for just an empty trans case. So anyway, just to help me line everything up. So I made my wonderful harmonic balancer out of uh, several layers of cardboard there and uh, just to make sure that I had clearance for it. So... Um, so the motor mount's a little bit different from like the one that you see here, which is the angled style, which that's where it bolts the engine on that side. And then, you know, you've got these uh, uh, little holes here for your uh, biscuit mounts that go underneath there. And you've got two different options. I think one's like one inch or two inch and the other one's three inch or something like that. I don't really remember what I ordered, but uh, just looked like it might work. And uh, I ended up going with the more V mount style. So instead of the uh, flat uh, horizontal style that this would be here so I'll show you what I'm talking about this is kind of funny because it actually ended up being really close as far as lining up with the hole uh, I've got it kind of lined up with the motor mount bolts down there but you can see it would have lined up with this hole really well but the problem I had with that is that this this is all at an angle this this hole right here goes all the way down this engine frame on both sides so it's at an angle so this wouldn't do me good because it's flat so unless I made some kind of a, a bracket that came straight out and then went down here and that's what I was actually mocking up in cardboard before this arrived because I knew I was gonna have to do something like that but then I started looking at it and I lowered the motor in here without any kind of brackets or anything and I kind of you know, got my tape measure and measured a few things I was like I might be able to just put this in like this so it worked out really well got some steel at uh, Lowe's it was four inches wide by 12 inches long I think they were like nine dollars a piece and uh, brought it home cut them down to eight inches long each one from here to here so about eight inches and it mounts the motor here and here and then down below and then you can see it's offset by about two inches or so here biscuit mounts that I bought off eBay were like 20 bucks they aren't that expensive they're about two inches or so high so it actually gave it just the perfect amount of spacing 
uh, for the uh, balancer and everything and just sitting right down in there so once again like I said I'm making this video not you know be like oh wow look at me I made some motor mounts but uh, <laughs> really just to uh, show someone who might own a 55 or 56 Cadillac who's wanting to make some motor mounts what their options might be so you're gonna have to have something offset like this or make an offset bracket like that and do the the V mount as they call it or I'm not really sure what you call it but anyway those are some of your options so if you have any questions uh, leave me a message in the comment section or something or send me a private message and uh, uh, I'll try and get back to you so appreciate it hope you all enjoyed watching and uh, see right, you later here is the 56 Cadillac uh, LT1 engine plate mock-up that I made out of cardboard uh, so you can see what it looks like off the car uh, how the angles were done so you can see more of the the color paint scheme on the engine and uh, just make it lighter and more more appealing than a big old flat block of steel so anyway um, ended up being four inches from here to here and uh, six and a half inches from here to here you've got your three-eighths hole engine mount holes here here and here in the three spots and the half inch hole that's elongated for your biscuit mount so you can allow it to slide back and forth uh, underneath the plate so the offset was an inch and three quarters from center of this hole to center of that hole. Uh, so inch and three quarters, it would give you the right amount of space for the engine to sit in there right and still have distributor clearance and, and whatnot so you can rotate your distributor. So anyway, there's that. Hey YouTube, here we are underneath the uh, 56 Cadillac, the parts car. And uh, as you can see, I am currently trying to manufacture and line up and mount my transmission mount on the rear of the tail shaft so uh, this is what it looks like so far coming out out the back end as it goes back to the rear differential so uh, considering that uh, I just dropped the motor in pretty good alignment now here's the issue that I'm having oh. alright here's the original 1956 transmission mount bar that's underneath the, the frame. Here's where I really like to bolt it to the transmission. You can see it's back just a few inches or so, or about five or six inches. Anyway, I was planning on trying to use, um, I don't know if you can see it, uh, this mount here, which has the lower mount on the transmission tail housing which actually lines up almost pretty darn good as you can see the mount there um, lines up pretty good with this I'd rather have it secured here so what I'm going to do is make a plate a weld a plate onto the uh, bottom of this here comes out and goes up here so and then use a rubber bushing and regular transmission mount so should be a pretty simple process so far pretty pretty darn pleased with the uh, way it lined up so anyway just an update all right so here we've got the transmission uh, bracket off the 56 the original one and this is the way it will be mounted this would be if you're looking at it from underneath the car as we just were in the previous video um, this end here would go towards the transmission mount so what it is made a little template here out of cardboard and uh, measured everything before I pulled it off. So uh, the plate's going to end up being 4x8, not 5x8. I wrote down 5x8, but it's going to be 4x8 because that's the thickness of the steel that I'm going to be buying. So this will be 4x8, so I'll be perfect for it. So uh, it looks like uh, to get this transmission lined up just perfectly, um, in between these two, it was 2 and 1 8 inch in between these two, and I left some room here, uh, the bottom here. It was inch and a quarter to right there inch and a quarter right there and I just drew it up here so I'm going to drill it out so I'm able to move the plate back and forth or move the transmission back and forth I should say if I didn't need to do any last minute adjustments same thing up here on the other end I did uh, it's five and a half inches from here to here and it was uh, I believe seven inches yeah seven inches total all the way to right there so I'm going to also make a half inch hole here and uh, you know make it a long groove kind of like you see here in both these spots 
all three of them. So this will also be a half inch hole, half inch hole, half inch hole. And basically I'm just gonna take the plate and instead of welding it on like I originally thought, I was like, well, I do wanna keep it as, you know, comfortable to put it back to normal as possible and without damaging any of the original parts or anything. So I should be able to just bolt this piece on. And it's got a nice little angle too. You can see how this side over here goes upwards and that's perfect because that's gonna work out to uh, allow room for the transmission to sit down a little bit farther. So I might have to put a couple of shims in there, AKA uh, large washers, uh, but uh, I think it's gonna work out really, really nice. I might flip this over and weld a little plate on in here, just like a piece of small metal, like so. And then that would just keep that from sliding back and forth in there, it would keep it snug. So anyway, that's my thought process. I gotta run over to the store and pick up a quarter inch piece of steel again because I'm out. So uh, so next video, uh, hopefully I have the mount done. I'll mount it on the bracket and then show you the final fitment on the transmission, so thanks. All right, latest update. Here is my transmission mount that I made. So here's the factory mount. Here's the plate that I made out of a four inch C-channel, eight inches long. Um, you can see when you flip it over, this would be the size facing the bottom of the car. That's where it mounts to the transmission. That's a new rubber mount that I bought, 700R4 rubber mount. So a uh, piece of C-channel, had to notch it here and here to clear this allow for there to be access to move this back and forth some. This is um, where it connects there, so it's, uh, it's pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. So and uh, didn't have to weld anything. I could weld that right there along the seam if I really wanted to. Don't really see a need to do it. So um, here's a template I made out of cardboard and I was originally gonna make a flat plate. but realized that was gonna slide around too much so I uh, ended up getting the C channel so it's locked in place. It's like it's one piece so pretty awesome. So all right, uh, next video I'll show you uh, after I got mounted on, so. And here it is all mounted up. So just kind of loosely mounted it in the uh, here. You can see um, I just loosely put in those bolts and just put the nut on the other side. There's three on each side. I only did two because obviously it's a mock up. I'm be taking it out, but it is supported by its own weight. I didn't I didn't bolt down the motor mount either because obviously I just too lazy. Anyway, the only one I torqued down was this one here. So, but uh, as you can see, it works works beautifully. Oh, wait thing I see that's going to be an issue and eh, it might not be. If I ever need to drop the pan I might want to trim back that plate just a hair just take it across my sander. So but uh, there you go. 700R4 and an LT1 mounted in a 56 Cadillac. There you go. And there we have it. Custom motor mounts I made Last week, the biscuit's still holding good, still plenty of space there for my harmonic balancer. All right, so the next big hurdle is to find out what kind of headers are gonna fit down in all that mess with the steering gearbox and whatnot, so. And then uh, I'm also gonna retrofit a new brake booster into the older car, into the other car, excuse me, over there. So, um, I use this one as my mock-up once again. So I'll have an extra bracket that I can cut up and screw up or whatever. So, all right, so there you have it. Next video, I'll be putting that, that motor there and that transmission and that car. So now my motor mounts are done. All right.